What I want to do in this video is do a very general overview of some of the more common colon resection procedures out there. The major ones we'll cover are the right hemicolectomy, left hemicolectomy, and a sigmoidectomy, including its variations, such as the Hartman's procedure. What I want to focus on with all of these are the parts of bowel that are removed the indications for the procedure, and we'll briefly mention where a colostomy bag is placed, if at all. Before we start, let's do a quick review of colon anatomy. Remember that the small bowel terminates at the terminal ileum, after which you reach colon, aka large bowel. First is the cecum of the large bowel, followed by the ascending colon. The hepatic flexure is right here, and the transverse colon is all this stuff right here. The splenic flexure is here. The descending colon is here. This then turns into the sigmoid colon, which turns into the rectum, which lastly turns into the anus before exiting the body. Now let's get to the main event, starting with the right hemicolectomy, aka ileocolectomy. The parts of the bowel that are usually moved include the terminal ileum, the cecum, the ascending colon, the hepatic flexure, and the proximal one-third of the transverse colon. Based on this anatomy, you're probably not surprised to find that the major indications for a right hemicolectomy include colon cancers on the right side and severe Crohn's disease. Now that we've removed all these parts of bowel, now what? Ideally, we'd be able to do a primary anastomosis right away, which means to join the remaining parts of bowel, so this part to this part, immediately after the resection. However, this isn't always possible due to numerous reasons that we won't discuss here, and the bowels have to be given time to rest before they can be rejoined. Instead, the proximal small bowel, or this part here, is turned into a colostomy which means the bowel is brought out through the abdomen temporarily as a way to excrete waste. And this is what a colostomy looks like in real life. So that thing right there is that guy's small bowel poking out through his abdomen. Sometime later, a secondary anastomosis can, but is not always performed to rejoin the segments of bowel after a period of rest. Next, let's talk about the left hemicolectomy. In this procedure, the distal wonder of the transverse bowel, the splenic flexure, the descending colon, the sigmoid colon are all removed. Major indications for a left hemicolectomy include cancers on the left side, ulcerative colitis, and recurrent diverticulitis. Just as in with the right hemicolectomy, a primary anastomosis is preferred but not always possible. And again, just as a reminder, what that means is take this part of the remaining bowel and to connect it with this part of the remaining bowel right away. If a primary anastomosis is not possible, then the proximal bowel, or this part right here, has to be turned into a colostomy to rest the bowels before a secondary anastomosis can, but is not always, performed to rejoin the bowel segments. So far, we've talked about right and left hemicolectomies. And you probably figured out by now that a hemi essentially means removing the entire colon segment on either the right or left side. Sometimes, instead of a hemi, a partial colectomy is preferred over a hemicolectomy, as you don't need to take out so much colon. An example of this is a partial right colectomy, which is similar to the right hemicolectomy, except that the terminal ileum is not removed. And so all of this would be. The last procedure I would like to talk about is the sigmoidectomy. Not surprisingly, the sigmoid colon is removed in this procedure. If a part of the rectum is removed as well, then this procedure is called a proctosigmoidectomy. Major indications for a sigmoidectomy include recurrent diverticulitis and cancers involving the sigmoid colon. Also, like with the others, a primary anastomosis is preferred but not always possible. And again, as a reminder, what that means is that you would take this part of the bowel and then rejoin it with whatever bowel is left right here. If a primary anastomosis is not possible, then this part of bowel 
is turned into a colostomy and the rectum is tied off. This is called a Hartman's procedure and is one of the more common procedures you'll see. Most of the time, a Hartman's procedure is not reversed, meaning a secondary anastomosis is not performed. But about 40% of the time, a secondary anastomosis is performed to rejoin the bowel segments. Lastly, I just want to mention this briefly. A total colectomy is when you remove the entire colon, and if the rectum is removed as well, this is called a proctocolectomy. Now, let's get to our take-home points. Please take a few minutes and read these over for a nice review. And hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.